Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome home to USA Global TV and Radio. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, and we are thrilled to start another week with guests from all around the world. If you'd like to join us, please go to our website, usaglobaltv.com, and book your session. Today's show is a woman's prerogative. We have a fabulous guest who is joining us from Sweden, and I just really want to give a shout out to Dr. Madeline Chan for making this connection. You never know know in life where one connection will take you. So please get off the sofa, get out there, do something, get to meet someone, lift someone else up, and let's do this together. So let me just share a little bit about our guest today. Our guest today is here to let us know that it is never too late to start over or start again. So she is an international best-selling author of The Power of You Too. And she's also the founder and owner of In Life and Amplification, and she's on a mission to help women find their power. Let's welcome Anger Nord into the program. Hello, welcome. Thank you so much. It's an absolute pleasure to have you with us today. As you heard me say, it's all about connections in life. And sometimes people are afraid to actually make a connection with someone. But if you stay stagnant, if you stay where you are, Anger, you couldn't be where you are today. So I know that you had an amazing career in corporate and then you retired and you were just sitting around going, hey, what's next? Tell us <laughs> about that journey. Just let's may, start may, with what you did I in just, corporate. Yeah. May I just yeah. say one thing first? Because sure. for me, it's really about cooperation, not competition. And that Excellent. was what you said. But I mean, I want to emphasize that. Yeah, because sure. that's really, really important. Um, well, in corporate, I was sales manager. I was this and this and this. <laughs> so everyone said I had a really good, successful career. But when, once you are kind of retiring, and I did that at 65, I was like, what is this? Is this all there is? Can I do anything else? I felt like useless, <laughs> like I wasn't counted any longer. And it was like, I'm a constant learner, so I needed to do something else. So I started a new personal development journey. And I realized I had so much more to give. And that is why I kind of started my business after a while. Actually, I was like starting another business first, but anyhow, that is me in a nutshell. I've done everything from being the driver to being the project manager for big, big, big projects, being a manager, being responsible for clients. Thank oh. you so much for sharing that, Inger. And I love what you said also, because I think that's really important is, and I found this, I'm 60 now. And in my journey, I found that women were really at each other's throats, stabbing each other in the back yeah. for a long time. And now I feel like there's been some kind of turnaround where it's saying, no, 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 let me support you. Let me give you a hand. Let me see how I can lift you up. What do you think it is that has actually made this shift where we are empowering each other instead of putting each other back or down? I wonder if that is really happening in the corporate world or if it is outside of the corporate world. Because I'm, I'm not in the corporate world just now. 
but there is a lot of movement in the corporate world when I was there to have women kind of mentoring other women. And maybe that has kind of grown, but I think actually that is more like outside of the corporate world. I think that's a great point. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, and most of the people that we deal with on a regular basis here on this platform are entrepreneurs, obviously on this particular show. So we are lifting each other up and empowering each other. So mm. you went and took it to another step, which I always applaud people for doing this in, in terms of writing something, putting out a book that people can actually refer to and say, okay, if she did it, then I can do it. What do you want people to take away from your book? Um, well, the power of you square, you have the power within you and you can actually step into that. That is the most important thing. Uh, in my book, I write about different aspects, but let me take a, a background first, why I wrote the book. Is that okay? Of course, please. Because business development is a journey that is a kind of going up and down, right? It's like, oh, now we're down and now we're up and now we're down and now we're up. It's a bumpy road. And I actually started a company in the US first to do property investment in 2017. But we all know what came in a while there. So I couldn't continue with that. So I had to close that down. And then I had all my workshops lined up to start doing those. And then you had this pandemic coming in. So nobody wanted to meet me. <laughs> Even if I wanted to meet them, they didn't want to meet me. So I also then had a real problem going online. I was reluctant to do that. And then I came across actually a Canadian company. So I started writing the book with the help of them, with mentoring from Canada, Black Card Books. And I then in the book, I'm writing about the workshops that I was due to have. And also I've added some chapters. So Writing a book for me, I mean, for me, it's easy. That's crazy, right? But I love writing. I've always loved writing. But I never came across anything that I would love to write about. And then uh, another thing that happened just recently was that I was actually told by a, um, what you call them, psycho? Psych Psych psychic? Psychic, yeah, that when I get older, I will write fiction books. <laughs> I'm waiting to get older now. <laughs> <laughs> Inger, I find that so fascinating that there you are in Sweden and that you wanted to do real estate investment in the States. How was that? How did you manage to get contacts? And, and before the pandemic hit, what were your aspirations for that project, for that business? Uh, I actually went to um, trainings with Success Resources. Do you know what that is? No, if you could explain, that would be great. Uh, it's one of the world's biggest uh, training companies, if you like, education companies. Um, and they had um, a, um, an event called Never Work Again. And there was this guy talking about property investment in the USA. And he was talking, from Utah he was, and he was talking about how good it would be for you and easy to kind of when someone gets uh, foreclosed on their property, then the bank can only take what they are owed. And if they sell it for a higher price, it's only the former owner that could have that money. And not a lot of people know that. So that's why I started, actually, because I, I love giving back to people. So I Brilliant. went on to in Utah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that didn't work out the way you wanted it to. So is that something that you might explore again? Oh, yes. I love properties and I love doing things like that. But for now, I want to focus on my uh, the Power U Square so I can actually 
help people step into their power path because we all have our different power paths, right? Yes, absolutely. Anger, how does it work, the power of you squared? What does that process look like for a woman out there who's going, hey, th this is for me. What's the next step? Well, I would say that you need to have, um, you need first to be really clear about what you want to do and where you are now and be really honest to yourself because a lot of people are cheating themselves. They believe they listen to a lot of people around them saying, you should do this, you should do that, and you should, uh, etc. And that's never good. So you need to be really honest. You need to know where you are now. So you need to see where you want to go. And I regard it as being a change project, if you like, that you do in, in work. You need to have, this is where you are. This is where you want to be. What is the change you need to do on which levels? And then you have also to think about what alternatives for change is there. Because there are always alternatives. If one way is not good, then the other way. So, and then you get the result. So first of all, figure out what you want to do and then figure out why you want it. Because if your why is not good, big enough, you will never do it. I agree with you there. And what I found in interviewing people is many times they know what they're not happy about, but yeah. they can't figure out what it is that will make them happy. So in working with your clients, how do you help them illuminate that idea of, okay, I really want to be a farmer. I really want to be a dancer or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Um, I mean, I have never worked with dancers. <laughs> and not farmers either, but I work with people that want to be better at speaking and then they have to kind of realize what is it they need to change to be better at that. And also, if you see this from the perspective of, uh, how do you say that in English? Hmm. That you have, you actually have a wish to do something. And as you said before, you don't really know what it is you want. So you first of all, you have to see what is it you don't want. And from there, it's, it's much easier for people to kind of figure out what they don't want, right? And then from there, you can go on. Okay, you don't want this, you don't want this, you don't want this. From there, scratch out what you don't want and then you will realize what you want. And I also have, I was through trainings with Advanced Coaching and Leadership Center in Dallas, outside of Dallas. And there are really good uh, structured way of asking questions where you can help people realize what is it they want. And in this process, I had read in your bio that you work typically with midlife professional women. Does that mean mm -hmm. women who are in corporate and out? There could be women that are in corporate now, but also women that have kind of took taken the step to go out of corporate. Because a lot of women have done that now. They are sick and tired of being, not having any time for themselves. They are kind of, as I said, midlife. And if you are in midlife and you feel like you're not coming where you want to do, you're not doing what you want to do, you're not happy. So I have actually, um, what do you call that? A, a template they can do, an, an exercise where they are putting on one x-axis, they put time, and then on the y-axis, they put when they are happy and surviving. And then they can map what they've done in life. And then they will realize what is it they are happy about. I actually went through that myself when I was uh, at IBM. And that was a really powerful thing. It sounds like a really illuminating process. And the other thing I'm wondering is, 
when someone starts to work with you and they're feeling more empowered, they can see where it is they want to go, but yet somebody at home isn't too happy about this process or oh, their friends yeah. are questioning them or saying, what are you doing at this point in your life? What, what is some of the feedback that you share? I've been there. I've done it. Sometimes, I mean, everyone nowadays knows that the five people you are amongst the most are the ones that are impacting you the most. I mean, I actually had to kind of step out of old time friends in a way to be able to kind of focus on my journey. And there is always people out there that can help you that can really make you feel that you are counted and your journey is counted. It's kind of, if you have, uh, how should I say this? If you're on a roller coaster going up and down, if you have someone with you in this roller coaster, you feel more safe, right? And that is what you need to do. Focus on finding the ones that really support you on your journey. Yes, I, I have had a similar experience when I left corporate in March of 2020 to do what it is. Um, I didn't even know I would be doing what I'm doing right now. But so many people said to me, oh, what are you having a midlife crisis? You know, <laughs> you need to, to go back to corporate and all these really negative things. But yet there were a yeah. few people, a handful of people who actually believed in me and they're still with me today. Oh, that's really good to hear, Jacqueline, because I mean, the, there is, as I had my, my, uh, my sister's husband actually said, oh, why don't you just sit down and relax? You have worked all your life. Why don't you do that? And I said to him, can you see me feeding the pigeons, sitting down? I'm not that person and I will never be. So it's, it's even your relatives, right? For sure. And to me, I think to myself, that has to be some kind of insecurity that they have. It has to be about them because I know just from speaking with you and, and myself and a number of people on our platform, we encourage people to step out and mm -hmm. empower themselves. But when someone has that kind of attitude, I always think something's going on with that person and they're fearful for some reason. What do you think? Oh, yes. I fully agree with that because, I mean, Listen, what Eleanor Roosevelt said, what other people think of me is none of my business. And I believe that fully because it's their opinion on things. They have their experience. I have mine. And everyone out there have their own experience to build things on. So I fully agree with you, Jacqueline. Well, I'm really excited that you're here today and that you're bringing this positivity and this amazing energy <laughs> that you have. So in your own journey of life amplifi amplification, what are some of the key takeaways that you've had that maybe are not in your book or maybe you haven't spoken on, but that there's something that you really want to share? That you always have these ups and downs, as I said before, and I mean, for me, when the pandemic hit, I was on my way to kind of start my first workshop. I had four workshops lined up and I had booked a place to be, but nobody wanted to come. I wonder why, but they didn't want to. <laughs> so I then had to step, take a step back and I was really reluctant to go online. And that's why I started writing my book instead. So I released that in 2021, and then I did an updated version this year. And now it's translated to Swedish and will be released now in September, probably. And also, talking about ups and downs, in January, I got shingles, and I got it bad. So I had to close down everything and not do anything. And now I'm restarting. So what it is, is that you have always to be, if you are falling, you have to step up again. So you have to have this woo, if you like. Do you see what I mean? Absolutely. And I'm so sorry to hear that you had shingles. I, I've heard it's an extremely painful experience. 
and yet at uh, the same time while you're going through it's Go more ahead. itching. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, so it's, you're in discomfort. You're in a state of yeah. being uncomfortable in your own body, which is a tough place to be. So what I'd really like to have us talk a little bit more about, because what you shared is so important. There are always ups and downs. And sometimes we get so focused in the downs and we think maybe this is a message Maybe it's a sign that I'm not supposed to be doing what I'm doing, but maybe it's the fact that I'm supposed to embrace this, I'm going to say, uh, opportunity as opposed to failure. How do we know if it's a sign or if it's an opportunity to embrace this? That's a tough one. Well, you know, fear in English, face everything and um Oh gosh, I've forgotten what it is. <laughs> but anything in, in sweet in Swedish doesn't make sense. But if you face everything and prosper, and if you go through the fear, because normally when people are kind of feeling like you said, they are fearful of something, and you have to push through the fear, like a uh, like a warrior. A warrior is pushing through, right? They are not kind of standing behind and, oh, I can't do this. Because when things are happening like that, you have to realize that something is probably in your mind telling you, well, you didn't succeed last time you did this. Why could you do it now? Or, hang on, something ha ha happened to you. It can be really bad. But I would say, don't listen to that. Just take it down. And I actually have a course about that, Science of the Mind, how you can kind of really focus on what your mind is telling you and not telling you because it's it's all to do with if something can happen. It hasn't to do with that it is happening. Very true. And I want to go back to your comment about the workshops that you had put together. I also have had courses where one or two people showed up and you start to get overwhelmed with emotion about what's wrong with this course or why didn't anyone register? This is really good content. This is a great workshop. And so what I did was I literally took a step back. I mean, took a step back and I said to myself, okay, whatever it is that I presented is not in the format or is not in a title that is drawing attention from people because it's not meeting their needs. So what can you do to either get a new title, get a new graphic, a new price point? And so I did a lot of beta testing to see what would work out. And therefore, I came up with an answer. So I just wondered for you and for people who are out there who maybe had workshops or courses or books that didn't sell, what approach do you take instead of getting overwhelmed with emotion and sitting in a corner and crying? Are you asking me now? <laughs> yes, yes. I'm, I'm not a cry baby. <laughs> but I can, I can understand what you're talking about because sometimes – if you give away something for free, people are really happy, right? But if you want to get payment, it's not the same. But I say if you don't take payment, you will not value yourself. But the thing you said as well about titles and things, um, I mean, my book title is The Power of You Square. And that's why I'm now working on this um, Step Into Your Power Path in Seven Steps. The infographic is free, but the actual course will be different. So it's kind of people like power, right? People really love power. And if they can be powerful themselves, then they will love it even more. I don't know if that actually asks, answers your question, Jacqueline. Yes, yes, you did answer my question. And I think you hit on something else that's also an important point, especially for women in business. You have a free download of your infographic, which is here on the screen, Step Into Your Power Path in Seven Steps. And then there's a link people can go to. And then you mentioned that there will be follow-ups that are going to be a paid experience. Yeah. When do we offer something for free and when do we charge? Because I know for myself, it's very awkward, especially 
if you really like your clients and they like you, you have this level of friendship or camaraderie. And then it's kind mm -hmm. of like, well, she's my friend. He's my friend. I can't ask for money. <laughs> How do we get out of this trap? Uh, actually, I had, a, I had a client that I helped. And she said I helped her more than several years of um, having a psychologist did. <laughs> and, and she actually said last time I met her, now I have to pay you. And then I believe I got the, she got value from it, but I have actually got payment and I have, like you say, friends that hasn't paid. I had a lot of people coming to me and I, oh, I want help with this. I want help with this. Can you help me out here? And it's, if, if you're not taking payment, they will not value it as much, I would say, in the end. But you can do take payment in another way by testimonials. Can you elaborate on that, please? Well, if you have someone that is happy with what you're doing, like your coaching, you can ask them, can you provide me with a testimonial? What do you think? And I have that actually on my web page. I have testimonials from people that has, has been helped by me. That's such a great point. I love that you did that. We actually started doing that here about a month ago. So we have testimonials for USA Global TV and radio. We have testimonials for Dr. Jacqueline, for coaching, for books. And why not? Why not ask people for a testimonial? Even on the mm. survey that we have for guests, there is an area to provide a testimonial because it's a great way to give back. And then it's also a great way to promote yourself yeah. as well. Because and also, now... And, and uh, and something that is really, I mean, with regards to testimonials, people are reluctant to do video testimonials a lot of the time. But I feel like that is the way you should do. I have more kind of, I don't have any video testimonials for now, but I have a lot of other testimonials. But I think actually that video testimonials is better in a way because then you will get you see the person, right? You see that they are serious about what they're saying. Absolutely. We have video testimonials uh, on both of our websites in different parts. And then, of course, the written testimonials with pictures. So I think it's a great mm. way to to mix it up. So let's go back to what we see behind you. It's never too late to start over. I did it at 65. So when you you made this step, you made this journey, we already talked about the fact that not everybody was on board with it, but you decided to move forward. What are some concrete steps that you took that you can share with our audience? So if they're sitting there thinking, okay, I want to start over. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. The first thing they're going to do is contact you. What happens after yes, that? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, for me, it was like, I had to figure out what I wanted to do. So I started this personal development journey because when I was working in corporate, I was like asked to do this and asked to do that. And every time I felt like, oh, yeah, thank you for asking me. So I moved around and did so many different things. And now in retro perspective, it's really good because then I can help people that are in different situations as well. But you need to figure out what it is you really want to do. And we discussed that before. What do you want to do? Why do you want to do it? And don't mix, mix it up with what people say around you. Because it has to come from within you. Otherwise, it will not be good. Yes, I love how you worded that. Now, what about the timing? Do we say to ourselves, okay, I'm going to start doing this new business. I'm going to start doing this new occupation. And if X, Y, Z doesn't happen by PDQ, <laughs> then I'm going to go running back to where I was. I don't like that. And I don't think you will do like that either, Jacqueline. <laughs> Absolutely because you not. need to give you need to give it time. And as I said before, I mean, it's a lot about when it's down, you have to evaluate, correct, and continue. And when you're up, you know that everything that is happening is going up and down like this, right? So you need to kind of evaluate, continue, and you need to have a plan. 
Because if you don't have a plan, nothing is working. Because you don't know what the next step is. <laughs> Absolutely. When I left corporate, I had a three-step plan, part A, B, and C, and I was down to B minus before I got to C. And I just felt great because I worked with a coach. I work with a certified coach. And I mm. want people to realize that at any time, I have six coaches, seven coaches. Coaches are there to help you see things from a various perspectives. I think sometimes people are afraid to reach out to a coach because they don't want to reveal all their own insecurities or, or the fact mm. that they don't know exactly what it is they want to do. They think they need to have it all buttoned down. And to me, it kind mm. of equates to when someone says they can't go on an exercise plan because they're overweight. It's like, no, 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 you need to go on the exercise. Like, so can, can you yeah. explain a little bit? <laughs> can you elaborate a little bit more about that? How we get so caught up in our brain that we talk ourselves out of things yeah well i actually have a, a coach in the states in florida and she's a clarity coach so i still have a coach helping me get things out of my head and down on paper because she can have ask questions to me that i wouldn't ask myself and i think that is what a coach is doing kind of um what do you say they are challenging you and then they are keeping you accountable for what you're doing as well right that accountability piece is so important mm -hmm. and i think i think that's where we fall down sometimes as human beings because we just want to pass the buck to someone else and say no it's not my fault the reason my <laughs> business failed is because of him her them us but meanwhile we're out on the beach instead of being in our business so inger could you talk a little bit about the time commitment that you've made to your business i know for me this is year two i'm working 80 to 90 hours a week and i've given up a social life uh... and uh, i'm very happy about it well, I wouldn't be happy about giving up everything around me. So I think you, one thing that is really important is that you have to take care of yourself before you serve others, because you can't serve others if you are down. So that is one thing that is really, really important. Yeah, I mean, all my life I've tried to serve others. I've been around and done things for other people, but... It's really important that you are realizing that you are important and you take care of you first. That's the number one thing. And then for me, I have set up, um, now I just have a personal business and I wanted to move into a professional business. I don't, what is it called in the States? Limited? Oh, LLC? LLC, yeah. Because... Um, if you have that in Sweden, you can do a lot of other things, set aside money for pension and things like this, which you can't do if you have another business. And that I have said next year, I want them to move into that. And I want to be able to have money this year, a profitable business, even if I haven't been earning anything during the spring. So I want to have that going on. I have set aside that in the end of, uh, gosh, December, I will earn, have earned 10,000 US dollars, or actually not US dollars, uh, euros per month. Just to be Congratulations. sure. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> That's outstanding. Inger, we have your website here, lifeamplification.com. Shall we pull this up and show the audience? Yeah, do that if you like. Okay. All right. Here can we I, are over on your can website. I just say, yeah, can I just say one thing first? Something that I'm working a lot on is the impact of presence. Because I believe today a lot of people are not present. They are focuses so much on what was and what shall be. And you need to be really present here and now to be able to move ahead and to get connections that are good. 
sorry for interrupting you. <laughs> that's okay. That's that's what we teach here on this platform is the power of elevated listening. So being fully present and not doing anything else and just giving a person the gift of your time and mm. your focus. So Inger, take us on a walk through the website. Tell us where we should go. Um, the first one is kind of just showing where I've been featured in media and things like this. I've been on podcasts and and um, what is it called? Business Woman Took a Day and Global Woman Club, and things like this. So it's just kind of showing what I've done or interviews I've been on. And actually the one, the next to last one here, um, that is with, with regards to presence. And the, the strange thing was that this lady, I was interviewed by her before. She reached out to me and asked me, can you be here again? Because I was on a wedding and my parents weren't present. So I realized it's so important that we talk about presence all the time, even with other people. Absolutely. So that was it. And then is this is kind of just going through who am I and what am I doing? So this, I think people can see themselves. And if you get to the next tab... And my, my, the purpose you have there, and also you have, um, because that is important, I think. That I agree you with you. Really are I think there. that one word, financially, is a word that really scares a lot of women. We've actually had finance coaches on here talking to women about not being afraid of money and not being, not feeling like they don't deserve to be very well paid for their work. And actually, I write about that in my book because I interviewed a, a guy that is a money strategist, if you like, and he said that females are afraid of math, mathematics in school, and hence they can't handle money when they grow up either. And they give it away to other people. And I mean, it's really important that you handle your money. For me, it's more like I'm not a financial advisor, but I can tell people how they are to follow up so they know exactly where they are. So this is kind of just the same as you have seen before. We can go to the next step, I think. Oh, you see my education and what I've done. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, very I'm impressive. A, I'm a constant learner, right? <laughs> <laughs> I admire that. This is about my book, and this is the former book, actually, that's here. That was a, a number one bestseller on Amazon, and the updated version is the one you can see in my background. Uh, uh, sorry? It's so when you, you mentioned about the power of video testimony, we have it here, and... Yeah. What would you say, are there any specific things that you can share about version one versus version two? It's minor updates, but I can share that Amazon is not so good <laughs> because I had to do a completely new <laughs> edition. Um, and also, I mean, um, it's minor updates, but I also have kind of experience from when I released the first one, the two years that passed. So I've learned more things. So I've actually included that and actually took away some things as well. I love that because it is a constant learning process, especially oh, with yeah. Amazon, for sure. Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, you okay. can't do this. And then you, you don't get paid, no? <laughs> right, exactly. So you've given people the ability to use these QR codes to scan and be able to purchase your book. Yep. And tell us about this tap into your power. That I've written a chapter there. Uh, it's Global Woman Club that has kind of released this book. I don't get any money for that. But the chapter was really uh, stretching me when I talked about it, when I wrote it. Because I wrote about things that no, not even my friends knew. And that was kind of... 
I took it out and then it was released. <laughs> And just the just the um, the hand gestures that you just did. Uh, how did that feel when you released that to the world? It was good. It was really good. And then people said, "Oh, you have to talk about this on stage and things." No, I don't have to talk about that on stage because it's it's gone now. It was a lump in my stomach, if you like. It was like building a. Um, house on a scary ground that was tippering and if something is not good then you can't be in the house on it right and then after this I really got rid of it so that's really something that was really good for me <laughs> well once again congratulations I love hearing that thank you and then if you get oh that is from uh, yeah that is from when we released that book. But if you get up uh, and go to um, uh, the services? next step services, yeah. There you can see the services, group coaching and one-on-one -on -one coaching. And then um, actually my workshops is underneath. Or you can see the testimonials here. And here are the workshops. Yep. So tell us, what are the differences between the workshops? Or I can see that you've really outlined it here. Yeah, say, science of the mind is a lot to do with how can you kind of, how can you make your mind go with you instead of against you? Mm -hmm. And how can you empty out what it is you really need to have, right? So... There I'm talking about clarity, get clarity of what you want. Okay, the and then self-leadership. Self self-leadership. You know as well as I do that self-leadership is the only thing that makes you move forward, right? You need yes. to have systems. You need to have this. You need to do this to be able to lead yourself and your business forward. So that's what self-leadership is. And then sales, as, as I've been in sales almost all my time, my life in corporate. Uh, I mean, it's. I'm not talking about funnel sales here. I'm talking about how you, by being present, can get better connections and can really get people listening to you. And also, I'm talking about the the um, the way you can have a system working for you in sales. And that's there. And social media is uh, more like uh, do's and don'ts. And I'm, I'm just covering LinkedIn and, and Facebook. I'm not doing a lot about the other ones because I'm not kind of... I think you need to focus when you are doing things like this. You can't be on every platform. Agreed. Very good point. I know for me, I really tried with TikTok and I just... Just yeah. couldn't get it together. I forget it. And I am on Twitter, but I'm not there because I just yeah. I'm not aligned with it. So and um, now it's okay. a cross, right? Twitter yes, is a cross it's, now. It's an X. <laughs> and so people can actually go here as well and book a yeah. free discovery call with you. Yeah. Fantastic. And I actually have one uh, on Thursday, a guy from Germany that kind of congratulations me. <laughs> thank That's you fabulous we love when yeah. people contact us and I, I i explain every show you know people come here for a reason to provide education inspiration and hope so when we have your contact information here please whoever is watching on the live or the replay go ahead and contact inger because she wants to hear from you she wants to help you inger we are at the end of our show today it's been an absolute pleasure i know you're coming back on thursday for the corner mm -hmm. bookstore and diane floyd bame and i will be very happy to speak with you at that point in time please i'm going to spotlight you again who would you like to contact you and what's the best way for them to do so well, anyone that feels that they need a change in life, where they are now. Um, and I focus on females, right? Midlife. But having said that, anyone is free to come to me. 
I, I have friends that are male that come to me every time they need a new work or every time they need to do a review. But that is not my primary client. So if you are kind of feeling stuck, not feeling that you want, you're going in the direction you want to, come back to me. And you can either email me or find the information on the website or find more information about me in the link tree. Excellent. And let's and also share the second, um, the banner for people to get the free download as well. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And that is what I'm working on now. That will be a course. Step into your power path in seven steps. And this is the, the infographic. That was important, my coach said, but I have to say it's an infographic. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being here, Inger. It was an absolute pleasure, and we look forward to seeing you later in the week. So enjoy the rest of your afternoon, and we'll look forward to seeing you on Thursday. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. And thank you to each and every one of you who are out there watching or listening on the live or the replay. We do appreciate it. As you know, you can go to our website, usaglobaltv.com. You can find our playlists under the show tab and you can watch all of our shows there. All of our shows are organized into playlists to make it easy to find. All right. As we sign out today, we want to thank our sponsor for this program. It's Diane Floyd Bame. Let's take a listen to her testimonial and then we'll watch her sponsorship and we'll be back with our next show. Take care. Hello, I'm children's author, Diane Floyd Bame, and I am co-host for several of the USA Global TV and radio shows. I joined because of the purpose of the USA Global TV and Radio. They provide content for the viewers and listeners, an opportunity for people around the world to have their own show or even be a guest on an existing show. We truly believe in helping others get their positive message out to the world. We also have the opportunity for the listeners, you can watch on several platforms and on YouTube, you can ask questions and even give a comment. We absolutely love it. I love being part of the USA Global TV and radio because I love positive messages and who doesn't? And we need more of that in the world. We are a family and we hope you will join us and become part of the family too.